think my first eureka moment was in the late 1970s when I realised that sex differences in body size and weaponry among different species of mammals were consistently related to contrasts in the number of females that males could monopolise, rather than to differences in feeding behaviour or in the habitats that they lived in, as was commonly suggested. Our work showed that in polygynous mammals, where a small number of males each monopolises breeding access to lots of females, reproductive competition between males is more intense than among females, and males are larger than females and often have much more developed weapons, whether these are horns or canine teeth, like the sabre teeth of these Chinese water deer, which are totally absent in females. Whereas in monogamous mammals, where individual males breed with a single female, so there's less competition, sex differences in competition are smaller and the sexes are usually similar in size and have similar weaponry. Subsequently, other people have used quantitative comparisons to investigate many other aspects of male anatomy and have shown that they too are consistently related to the nature of breeding systems. For example, in species where very successful males have opportunities to mate with large numbers of females, they may need a bit of help and often have developed large penis bones or bacula like this one from a male fur seal. And where individual females often mate with multiple partners in the course of a single season, males often have unusually large testes in order to produce large ejaculates, which increase the chance that it's their sperm that fertilises the female. Other sex differences that are consistently related to the nature of mating systems include sex differences in growth, metabolic rate, foraging behaviour and longevity. For example, in polygynous systems, where males grow faster and are larger than females, they often show higher levels of mortality throughout their lives and die at earlier ages. Understanding these differences between the sexes and their distribution can have important consequences for the ecology of males and females and for the design of conservation and management systems. And it can also allow us to reconstruct the likely mating behaviour of fossil species. For example, the presence of large sex differences in body size in human fossils from around three million years ago suggests that our ancestors were almost certainly polygynous rather than monogamous, while the relative size of our testes suggests that females seldom mated with multiple partners in the course of a single season. And the shorter lives of men compared to women are probably also a consequence of our polygynous past. Mm -hmm.